Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxpot and welcome to Maker Quest. In these next few episodes, we're going to be exploring electronics at home. To help us out, we're going to use a few common household objects. If you don't have them at home, you can find them easily and cheaply at your local hardware store, and you can also definitely get them on the internet too. This first episode, we're going to cover circuit basics. So to help us out, we're going to use, if I can get it off the table, a coin cell and an LED. Woohoo! Yay! This is one of my favorites because it changes color, but it's just a regular LED, which stands for light emitting diode. So in electronics, we're typically interested and want to control two main things, the currents and the voltages in a circuit. Current measures the amount of charge flowing past a given point. And since charges, which are just electrons, are super lazy, you got to give them a little something something to make them move around the circuit. They're not just going to flow of their own accord. In other words, you have to do some work to move charges around a circuit. So that's actually what the voltage is. The voltage is the amount of work that it takes to move a charge from one point to another point. And that's why the voltage is always defined as being between two points. Okay, cool. So in our super simple example of the LED and the coin cell, the coin cell is providing current, uh, it's pushing current through the LED and the current is generated in the coin cell through chemical reactions. And I have to admit, when I put the LED on the coin cell, I know that the longer LED leg has to be on the positive side of the battery and the shorter LED leg has to be on the negative side. Well, why is that? What happens if we flip it around? <gasps> Nothing. Well, that's kind of boring. But actually, this is pretty cool because this helps us know that the flow of current in a circuit really matters. So current is defined to flow from positive to negative. And an LED is a special type of electronic component that only allows flow in a circuit in that particular direction. So when I flip the legs from the short side being on the positive end, it doesn't allow current to flow in that direction. Okay, cool. So now we know a few super important things about uh, circuits. Okay, so how do we quantify these things? Well, current is measured in units of amperes, or amps for short, abbreviated with an A, and voltage is measured in units of volts, or V. For example, a car battery has a huge amount of charge, whereas a tiny little coin cell only has a little bit of charge. So we probably wouldn't be able to run a car with a coin cell, although we could figure out how many coin cells it would take to run a car. Let's do that. Cool. So. What else do we need to know in order to solve this problem? Well, I suppose we should probably look some stuff up about our car battery and our coin cell. So if we go and we look at our car battery, we'll see some writing on the top that will tell us that the car battery is 12 volts and this particular one is 35 amp hours. We can also read some other stuff on there. For example, it tells us it's a rechargeable sealed lead acid battery and it definitely tells us to not throw it in the garbage. Just like all other batteries and electronics, make sure you take them to the proper e-waste recycling place. Okay, so what is this 35 amp hour unit? We know that amps has to do with current, right? But there's an hour attached to that. That's actually the battery capacity. And that's what tells us how much current we can draw from the battery over time until it's totally dead and we can't get any more out of it. So in this case, 35 amp hours tells us that we can draw 35 amps from the battery for one hour until the battery's dead. Or alternatively, we could draw less current for a longer amount of time. Say for example, five amps for seven hours, since five times seven is 35. Cool, okay, so what about the little coin cell? Well, if I look at the writing on the top of this, I can see that it tells me a part number on the top, it tells me the manufacturer, and on the bottom it says 3 volts lithium cell. Cool, so we know that this little coin cell is 3 volts, and I still need to know the battery capacity, so I can do a little bit of googling to find the data sheet by looking up the part number, and I can find that this coin cell has a battery capacity of 225 milliamp hours, or 0.225 amp hours. 
So that's a lot smaller than our car battery. This little battery can only provide 0.2 amps for one hour. So I think we'll probably need a lot of these to get a battery capacity that's equivalent to our car battery. Well, how many exactly? If you wanna figure that out on your own, go ahead and pause here. To do this, we can use a little bit of math and we can represent the number of coin cells by with an N or whatever letter you want. And we can determine that we need N number of batteries with a battery capacity of 0.225 amp hours to give us 35 amp hours for a total battery capacity. When we solve for N, we find that we need 155.6 coin cell batteries to give us a total battery capacity equal to the car battery. And since we can't have fractions of these guys, we need 156 coin cells to give us a total battery capacity that will be equivalent to our car battery. Cool. Done, right? Well, wait a sec. What about the voltage? We know that the car battery is 12 volts, but this little coin cell is only 3 volts. So it looks like we'll have to do a little bit more investigating to figure out how many coin cells we actually need. So what else do we need to know? <gasps> Check out part 2.